Hello everybody and welcome to Mega D Vision. Today we'll be looking at a profile of one of the most popular boxers ever to come out of South Africa, Brian the Golden Boy Baronet. Enjoy and please remember to like, subscribe, comment on the video and there'll be more to come. One of the most popular fighters in South African boxing history, the story of Brian Baronet touched the hearts of the nation beyond the realm of just fight fans. Hailing from Durban, this gutsy fighter cast a magical spell over all who saw him. He was nicknamed the Golden Boy, and rightly so. He had all the talents, charm and heart to make it in any field he wanted to. His passion, however, drew him to the square ring, following in the footsteps of his father Ernie, who himself was a two-time national champion. Well, boxing was his life. He was very hyped up, uh, especially before a fight. Uh, he used to walk in the street and uh, make moves. He was very hyped up before a fight. He was a very colorful fighter, and uh, he was a nice, uh, very nice personality. Uh, he wasn't only a, a champion in the ring, he was a champion out the ring, and that, that made him a nice and a very colorful and very popular fighter. The way he boxed, the way he moves, you know, the, and he used to finish off the fights. It was great. Maybe, you know, the crowd pleaser. Brian Baronet had the, the appearance, what we would call the matinee looks. He was an idol, a good-looking youngster, a chap I had a lot of respect for. As a fighter, in and out of the ring, he was a thorough gentleman. He was a very uh, charismatic uh, boxer. Uh, people loved him. He was an all-action fighter, he a lot of style. And uh, he just had that something electrifying that brought that, that pulled people to, to his matches. Colorful style and charisma. He had them both. He was a, a, a fighter who always gave of his best. He had a nice style, the kind of thing that when he came out of the corner, you knew you were going to see action. You weren't going to see somebody grabbing, holding, lying on or anything, not him. He moved, he moved well. He threw punches from all directions. Uh, he, he was very artistic in the ring and yet at the same time, aggressive, controlled a fight well. He always did it well. and. Outside the ring, he had that personality that went with it. Um, the nice guy to talk to, easy chap. And I think that's why the people went for him. And of course, a good looking guy as well. So all together, yes, he had what it took. Beyond the good looks and charming manner, Baronet was also equipped with devastating two-fisted punching power. He scored a sensational 10 knockouts in his first 12 fights, and it seemed as if he was destined for international honors. Brian, one of the biggest draw cards of his era, appeared invincible as he continued his way to the top in one of the toughest businesses in the world. He was matched to meet Gene Mad Dog Hatcher for the WBA Junior Welterweight World title. These are the two gentlemen that you will see in the ring coming up around February or March of next year, 1985, and they will fight and do battle again. Again, WBA Junior Welterweight Championship. I think he was on the verge of a title shot, and then I don't recall exactly what went wrong, but um, if he'd got it at that stage, the chances were that he could have won it. Unfortunately, Hatcher lost his title in an upset to Abaldo Sacco, and the fight was sidelined. Brian, who was ranked as the fifth best junior worldweight in the world, was a tough fighter who would often spar with middle and light heavyweights in the gym. He would take on any challenge and was as gracious in defeat as he was in victory. He scored impressive victories over the likes of Juan Rondin and Ali Karim Muhammad, a murderous body puncher from Chicago, before being matched against the highly rated Domingo Ayala. Brian had outpointed Eric the Prince Martin over 10 rounds only 17 days earlier. Very much from the corners, but otherwise going well. With the jab and the lip hook. Oh, a terrific left from Baronet. That shook a yada. Best punch so far from the young South African. Great lip hook. 
Puerto Rican seems to have taken the punch well. His legs are still steady. And he's coming back with a jab. A good right hand from Baronet. Beginning to score far more freely here in round three. And you'll notice he's not backing up. He's taking the fight to the Puerto Rican. Well, Ayala was certainly confused there. And then work on the inside. Certainly a powerful puncher, and that blow proved it. Okay. Doug Dolan has said it all, two rounds to go. On our card, Ayala will run in front on points. Barnett has a Big leeway to make up in points. His best bet would be to win this fight inside the distance. Doug Dolan has advised Baronet not to get involved in the slugging match, and yet it was during the slugging match that Baronet very nearly knocked out the Puerto Rican. Round five. Both men a little cautious. No really good punch has been landed so far. Power certainly appears to have left the yellow's punches. He doesn't have the sting he had earlier on. But now he's opening up. But it's Baronet who forces him to break off the exchange. And Baronet goes to the body. And a right hand is shaking him and down. Here and now. It looks to me as though he will. And he can. He's pouring in the punches. Won't let a yellow out that corner. Ripley has to break him. And now Baronet picks his shots to the body. Trying to get the yellow's guard down. To the head. The Puerto Rican is wobbling. Wavering. Trying desperately to hold on. And time is running out for Brown Baronet. Only 30 seconds left in this round. He needs to end the fight here and now. And that right hand and that. How long can Ayala take those punches? Not very much longer. It's over. With another victory over a top contender under his belt, the handsome Italian was once again in reach of his dream. A dream shared by many fans who eagerly awaited to see him crowned as world champion.
final blow. That was big trouble for Domingo Ayala. The man who put Baronet down in the third round and the fifth round. And now the South African has his opponent absolutely dazed and he very nearly Baronet thumped Stan Christodoulou, who knew he had to come between Ayala and this magnificent South African on this evening's performance. The dream was shattered as Brian lost in an upset in a fight against the underrated Arthur the Fighting Prince Myasella and then set off in an ill-fated campaign to the United States. Still a top contender, Brian scored three successive victories and then suffered a 10th round knockout in a hard-fought fight at the hands of Harold Brazier, a fighter he'd previously beaten. On his return to South Africa at the end of 1986, Brian retired from the ring with a record of 32 wins with 19 knockouts and only three defeats. In 1988, however, the golden boy was lured back. The money was good by that stage. I mean, when he started out his career, the purses were low. When he came, was on his comeback trail, purses were getting really attractive. And I think maybe the, the two things together, and it's hard for a fighter who's been in the top rank, who's been in the forefront of uh, publicity, public opinion, and all that type of thing, to suddenly just drop it and run away from it. Um, the lure is great. There was always atmosphere when he fought. Uh, the, the, the crowd reaction was tremendous. He was highly popular. Um, you know, Durban boxing today is pretty dead because there's no Brian Baronet around. He was tremendous in that respect and the crowd were behind him. They, they actually loved him. He had uh, a following second to none and those fights on his, what we call his comeback campaign, uh, he packed out the places down there. The, the old tennis courts couldn't take the people. And the, the night of the vice fight, which was the unfortunate one, I mean, I was there with the promoters and we couldn't even find a seat to sit on. We stood and watched. Prior to his, his last fight, he was in a car accident. Uh, it was never confirmed, but uh, we believe that he was unconscious uh, in the car. Uh, he took a tremendous smack on the head and that caused the uh, bleeding on the brain. And uh, actually, off just before the fight, he was a bit, a bit discoherent and uh, he didn't uh, actually know what was going on. And uh, I think that is a thing that they should have followed up. But it was, it's unconfirmed and uh, we, can, we cannot elaborate on that. Although Brian's two initial comeback fights paled in comparison to his early fistic feats, the fans still flocked to see him. On the 14th of June 1988, Brian faced Kenny Weiss in what tragically turned out to be his last fight. After the bout, Brian collapsed into a coma and died a few days later. I was very shocked uh, the night I, saw, I sat and I watched the, the fight on TV and when I saw Brian come out the corner, it didn't, it didn't look like the Brian Baronet that I knew. And uh, the way he fought, uh, up to the, until the time where he collapsed in the ring, because I don't think he took a solid punch that put him down. Uh, he took a shot behind the ear, but I don't think that was actually the cause of, uh, of his death. I think that uh, he, had a bleed, he had bleeding on the brain. And to me, it, uh, I was very shocked when I saw what was going on, what happened to him. I couldn't believe it. It was such a shock. Um, even to this day, he was such a good fighter, and I could never believe it could happen to him like that. He was a great, great fighter, very good from the town. Excellent, uh, but a nice person too. Nice, how can I say, uh, how can I put it this way? Um, he was a wonderful person. You could talk to him, you could be with him, associate with him, everything. No problem at all. He was a humble guy too, very nice person. You know, he was very close to a lot of people, uh, especially in the boxing uh, academy. Uh, he, he was uh, a, a very well-known and a very pleasant guy. Uh, and everybody was shocked when that happened, you know. I remember I was there the night when it happened, you know. I was sitting at ringside. And, um, you know, it was very sad, you know. It's, it makes a lot of boxers think, you know, they want to retire. But it's wrong to think that way because, uh, you know, uh, if Brian has his life over, I can promise you he would, he would, have, uh, he would be a boxer again. Brian may never have won a world title, 
But some people don't have to win a title to be a world champion. He won the hearts of the nation and was a shining role model in a sport which dearly needs more like him. Here and now, and that right hand and that. How long can Ayala take those punches? Not very much longer. It's over. Brian Baronet around today, guess where he'd be? Right up there on the top of the bill. Because uh, people go, win, go for fighters like that. He played the fool with his guy. He'd be world champion in two, div two or three divisions, I'm sure. Honestly, he was really, really good. That's my personal opinion as a boxer and as a trainer. I think Brian Barnett is tremendous, a very good, good person. Oh, definitely we can do with another Brian Barnett at this stage because uh, we haven't got uh, that uh, kind of talent around at the moment. That it did a lot in this respect, the regulations were changed. It was the introduction of what we call the punishment indices, where today the boxer sustains a lot of punishment, the doctors at ringside and the commission record the punishment, and after a while um, the boxers are subjected to various examinations. So it did a lot of good because a lot of positive things were added to protect and safeguard future boxers in absorbing a lot of punishment in their careers. So that was one good thing that happened as well. Sometimes these things happen, you never bring them back, but one good thing happened, the safety increased to, to such an extent that we were the leaders in the world in relation to the punishment index. And I'm proud of that account. And that, 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 should, that, that we can attribute to the, the tragedy of Blind Baronet. He was a very, very down to earth person. And every, uh, as far as I'm concerned, everybody knew him and loved him. With me as a friend, I loved him very much. All I can say is that uh, we miss Brian Baronet and uh, to find a guy, another fighter like Brian Baron is one easy. Thanks very much to uh, Dion Pochita for producing that insert.